Welcome back, everybody, to Nain Shorts. Uh, no time for for silly jokes today. We're gonna get right into it. So I want you guys to just follow along with what I'm doing right now. Okay? Ready? Oh wait, I'm getting a call. Hello? Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm just here filming and stabbing the fourth wall. No, I'm good. I'm okay. <laughs> okay, that was silly. Sorry. <laughs> But there was a point to that. I wanted to illustrate um, what the definition of a weapon is for a moment. Now, I aggressively tried to pull out my cell phone and then I got a call, so I had to take it. I'm sorry. But then I casually pulled out a knife and started stabbing into, well, the fourth wall. So I posed a question to you, and that was the lead in. Which one of these two is the more dangerous? Let's explore that for a little bit. All right, knife, go stab Rick in the neck. Phone, hit him in the head, or write a mean tweet. Huh, I guess mine are defective. Oh wait, you have to pick them up in order for them to become anything other than an inanimate object. Um, so for someone like me, both of these are equally dangerous. Um, in reality, this is a facsimile of a knife. It's not a real knife, it's plastic. So I can't cut or stab anybody with it. But I can hit somebody, repeatedly. The same thing with this phone. And yet, these are tools that are used on a daily basis. Knives are used for cooking, for eating, for cutting hair. Uh, other versions of it, cut paper, open boxes. But when does it become a weapon? When does it become dangerous? Same thing with the phone. How many of us consider a phone to be a weapon? I know I do. And it isn't because I go around looking at things saying, oh, that's gonna be a weapon. Oh, that'd be a cool weapon. It's because I've explored and cultivated a way to weaponize my thoughts. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> First, let's understand what it is to hurt someone. Again, in order for these to become anything other than inanimate objects, I had to pick it up. My hands had to be involved. But before that can even happen, I have to decide up here and make up my mind that I'm going to do something to cause physical harm to somebody else. And it is until that happens, again, there are just objects in your hand. And this is the mentality of an aggressor, somebody that's trying to attack you, cause you harm. Their only thought is to harm you. They're not thinking, I'm gonna throw a left-right combo, I'm gonna throw a knee and a kick. No, if somebody is determined to hurt you, they are going to do so. Even if it's with something like a cell phone. Because it doesn't really matter what's in the hand, it's the intent behind it. And that's the mentality that we have to accept first and foremost before we can start weaponizing our thoughts in our training. Now let's talk about the differences between training in a dojo and real life situation. Now I know, first thought that people have, yeah, we have realistic training, you know, we get hit, we get bruised. And that's not what I'm talking about. Physical pain happens if you stub your toe in the morning. That doesn't necessarily train you to resist more pain in your toe it still hurts every time you do it. But you do learn, maybe I shouldn't walk barefoot around my bed because it's made out of whatever it is made out of. You get a lesson from it. What I'm saying is, let us really dissect what's going on in a class. Many of us train with knives and have techniques, and some of them, awesome, great. But it's 15 cuts to a technique Realistically, would somebody stand there and allow you to do all 15? Legally, at which point was that threat neutralized? Or how bad was the threat that you needed all 15 cuts to achieve self-protection? There's a fallout there. And we need to make that connection before we can really start using what we train in a real life situation. Other aspects of training in the gym, Somebody gives you their arm. 
so you can do your technique, so you can practice what it is you're trying to learn at that time. Anyone out in the street that's trying to hurt you, they're not going to give you that chance. Hell, you might not even see them coming. They may just blindside you, and what do you do then? Like all people, your first thought is always going to be, holy crap, and you're going to protect yourself as best you can. That is one of the first ideas that we need to cultivate in our training, is the idea that we're going to react how we're going to react, but the more important thing is what do you do after that? If you do see an attacker coming and you're standing there, what are your thoughts running through your head? Is it left, right, right, left? Is it, are they gonna kick? Or is it simply something is coming, I need to move. I need to protect myself and I need to make sure that they cannot continue their attack. Is that an idea that you cultivate? How do you cultivate that? Because realistically, again, in a gym, there is no malice. People are there to train something, learn an art. And if your purpose is for sports or something uh, for fitness, then maybe this isn't the mentality that we need to cultivate. But the idea is to protect yourself out there where there is no master to call stop, where there is no referee, where there is no judges that are going to say, oh, this person won by decision, where the person may or may not stop hitting you the moment you hit the ground. So these are the things we really have to consider. One, are what we training applicable in the, in the real world? in a real life situation. If they're not, what do I need to think about to make the things that I train applicable in the real world? And I believe that it starts by understanding the weaponization of ideas. First and foremost, what is your opponent thinking? And when you train, is your partner giving you that feel? And again, I do not mean you're gonna swing full bore that you're gonna just punch with everything you have and see if that person can take care of it. If that's how you train, fine, nothing against it. What I'm saying is, can you portray the very same idea that I am going to hurt this person in front of me at this speed? Can you slowly, methodically use that and give the person a sense of, oh wow, if this person went any faster, any harder, I would have been hurt. We go slow so we can understand it, so your partner can see it and be able to work their idea, but even that small detail of how you feed your training partner makes a big difference in what it is that they're learning. And if you give a little resistance, again, not trying to hurt them, but just enough, then they, maybe they can learn a little bit more. Consider this, consider your favorite technique. Whatever it may be, whether it's empty hand, whether it's a weapon, it doesn't matter, your favorite technique that you love practicing over and over again. If you went full bore, if you went at full speed, all the power that you can muster, how much physical damage would you actually cause a living person. Something to consider. If it's they would be dead, well, is that something that you should readily bust out every time that you're trying to protect yourself or that you perceive a threat? Maybe not. Because here's the thing, in a real life situation, you won't know what that person's intent is until they're actually doing it. So you don't know if they're just going to throw one punch or if they're going to throw a volley of punches. You don't know if they're going to pull out a knife, a gun. So until you do, until you are sure that that's what it is, if you overreact, you're now the bad guy. So how do we break this down? in really understanding the aspects of how to develop this mentality and how to recognize it more importantly in an opponent. Well, first of all, 
we just determined that unless this is in somebody's hand, it doesn't really amount to anything. It's just an inanimate object. And even if it is in somebody's hand, until they have the mentality to use it as a weapon, it doesn't become one. But let's look at it physically, mechanically. Well, first of all, the hand has to grab something, has to pick it up, has to pull it out. There's an indicator right there that more is going on than what you thought. Now, that is a perceivable threat. And you can act on it. But what if there is no weapon? What if it's just empty hands? Well, this is a pretty good indicator that somebody wants to punch you. Those who train, yeah, there are elbows, shoulders, there's knees you can use to do various things. But in order for any of those to happen, they have to be within hand's reach. So the first idea is to understand what your hands are capable of. You're also learning to understand what your opponent is capable of. And if you learn how to keep an eye on them, then you have a sense of where they're coming from and what they're capable of in that moment. That's the first idea. Second, movement. Move your feet. In other words, get out of the way. Either stay far enough where you can't get hurt or get close enough where you minimize that person's ability to do and maximizes your options on what you can do to stop what's coming next. Because after that first punch, there's probably gonna be a second and a third unless you do enough to stop that from happening. All right. Well, what else is there? Well, what about the sensitivity that you develop in understanding the energy that's being thrown at you? Because again, you don't know what it's, it's going to be until it becomes that. And if your first thought is to just brace for it, you may not have time to recover before the second one comes. So being able to be fluid with your movements to get out of the way, to move forward or back as needed is gonna help you in figuring out in real time how much you should or shouldn't do. And of course, Understand what the mentality of the person that's trying to harm you is really going through. They just want to hurt you. So how do you stop that? And it isn't a matter of a technique, but it really is as simple as how do you stop that thought process that they have? If they're thinking single-mindedly, let me hurt you or let me hurt this person, can I distract them enough with words? Not even anything physical. Can I change the way that they're thinking just by the way I say things? By admitting, hey, maybe I'm wrong. I apologize. By not being confrontational. And if it does become physical, do I hit them hard enough so then they're like, ow? And that allows you to do everything else that you can to not necessarily hurt this person, but stop them from doing what they're doing. And if at that point it's still escalating to the point where they're still adamant about hurting you, well then you go as far as you need to to make sure that that stops altogether. And again, those aren't things you can train for. They're situational training and they're fun and they're great, but you cannot train for every possible scenario. But everything that I just talked about right now can and is present in any situation, whether it's in your class, in your doing a situational training, or it's out in the real world. The mentality, the mechanics, the, sensita the sensitivity to know the changes in energies, and more importantly, how to keep yourself calm so your brain has the ability to process all this information because you will not have the time to think. Your brain has to do all that for you. And that's what you do in class. And that's how you train these ideas so they become automatic and not something that you have to fish through and try to figure out in the moment. Rick, would you like to join me for a little bit of a demonstration? On my way, boss. All right, all right. So, hi, Rick. Hi, Rick, <laughs> again. This is going to be an empty hand kind of, kind of demonstration. Now, 
I'm just gonna put my fist out for now and we're gonna talk about the idea of, I close my fist, my hand, now it's a fist. It's going to hit you, yeah? Yeah. Um, All right. Yeah, it would hit you. Okay, well, the thing is, is I'm not close enough to actually do so. It's okay. Nah, we're pretending. <laughs> Got it. We're giving a, a sense of the mechanics behind right. it. Okay. The movement also applies to me, the aggressor, because if I'm not close enough to hit you, no threat. Exactly. Got it. Which means that if I want to achieve my goal of hurting you, I have to be close enough to reach you. Right. All right? I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do. Uh-oh. You're going to somebody. I'm just going to do my best to harm you. Okay. What are you going to think about? Uh, nothing. Because since I don't know what you're going to do, I don't want to say, oh, if that punch comes, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. Or if he kicks me, I'm, I, I need... That can't be my first thought. You bring up a very good point. Oh, do I? Oh. Yeah, you do? Okay. Because as we're talking about the differences between what happens in a classroom setting and out in the real world, in a classroom setting, you know what's coming. Right. Everybody there fights like you. Correct, yeah. Outside of that, you have no clue. Right. So how can you prepare something specific for a specific punch or kick that may never come? Yeah, and, and again, because you told me your parameters are that I'm not going to tell you what's coming. I can't prepare for that in that way. And right. I can't say, oh, a right hook is coming through. I know I'm going to go over to the left or whatever it is. Um, right. I have to just now rely on my motions and, and what you give me as far as Oh, you're putting your weight in your back leg, which means you might be, you know, or your, your, your shoulders coming up. Oh, it must be the, the right arm coming out. Those are the thoughts that, I, that have to run through my head. And they got to be quick, quick thoughts that, oh, that... You're just, your brain at this point isn't really thinking as much as it's just recognizing the things yeah. that you already understand. Correct. And if what you understand is body mechanics, that applies to anything. Right. Not <laughs> just fighting, just movement in general. That's right. So, okay. very important thing to know, right? Yeah. So, you ready? I am. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, I got hit in the throat. <laughs> <sighs> this brings up another good point. The old man is fast. <laughs> no. <laughs> if the aggressor has a single mentality, they're gonna miss a lot because their only thought is hurt. In my mind, I had the upper hand. It wasn't until I looked down that I realized that fist was in my throat. I felt like, oh, I'm still gonna hit him because I had made up that I wanted to hurt him. I was gonna grab him and then I was gonna use this to punch him, which is very typical in a fight, especially a street fight. Oh, yes, definitely, agreed. And it wasn't until after I stopped thinking that that I realized I was done. In reality, that would have been deep in my throat and that would have stopped my mindset of hurting Rick. So I did the right thing. <laughs> whether or not you did, it worked. Right. It isn't about right or wrong, nope. it's about whether or not it functioned as it was intended to. And if your function is a specific technique, it may not work every single time. And if you haven't taught your students what they can do when that happens, when everything that they've tried, everything that they know and hold to be true doesn't work out there, if you haven't taught them how to recover from that, it might be very detrimental to that particular person. But instead, if you help them understand how to weaponize the thoughts. their thoughts, at any given point, they will always have options and increase the likelihood of getting out of that situation in a healthy way or oh, yeah. in the best, in the best, case, best scenario. case scenario. Am I good? You're good. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye. See you. <laughs> so what are we doing now? Now we're not talking about your training techniques or regimen. All that stuff is great. All I'm implying 
All I'm suggesting is that if we change the mentality behind how, how we train, we can get better results. Physical stuff is the physical stuff. The human body is the human body. It is this that drives everything else that we do, whether it's driving home safely or hurting someone. And if you can disrupt this and the person in front of you, you will change the outcome that quickly. Thank you very much for joining me again on Nine Shorts. Hope you have a wonderful day. Three, two, one, cut!